Hi again, welcome to another video. And uh, hopefully you might watch the overview of the uh, Picascope, but in this one, you can't use a, an oscilloscope without looking at scope probes. And believe me, I didn't quite realize how complicated they were <laughs> until I started doing this video. Uh, you'd think after 45 years, I'd know a bit more, than, <laughs> I know a lot more now than I did before, because they're not just a piece of wire that goes from <laughs> one end of a connector to the other. They're much more complicated than that. Well, what we're going to look at is the TA386 uh, 200 megahertz uh, scope probe. But we're not, um, we're going to look at it from a calibration perspective because all scope probes need to be calibrated. And also, it's also about calibrating the uh, Picascope 2000 itself. So we go through all the different processes that you naturally do when you're starting your day and doing electronics. Um, uh, zeroing the offsets inside your picoscope and also then calibrating your scope probe. So these are all really important procedures, especially if you're after accuracy, okay? So um, so we're going to analyze these probes. Uh, we're also going to look at um, not just the probe, but also you get a little bag of bits like this. And we're going to look at why you get this bag of bits and why these bits are so important. We're going to uh, look at the scope probes from an AC and DC perspective, primarily from a DC first. And we're going to do experiments. Um, so I'm going to go through some basic electronics uh, knowledge. We're going to look at uh, potential divider networks and also a little bit of AC theory um, in terms of uh, filters and also uh, why we have times one and times 10 probes because of very, very uh, particular reason why we actually have them. And also, uh, depending on certain uh, industries you're in, you may actually even have times 100 probes. But hopefully you'll understand through this video why not only we have times one and times 10, but in fact, why times 100 even exists, okay? So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you learn something from it. Uh, let's see uh, where we start then. So the first thing is that we're gonna have an over overview of the accessories uh, and the features of the probe. So the BNC connector, BNC stands for Bayonet Nile uh, Consulman. And Nile Consulman were the two people who invented the BNC connector. And this connector is very, very special. It's actually used in high frequency work, hence the reason it's used on oscilloscope probes, but it's also used on signal generator leads, uh, RF uh, sets and things like that. And it comes in different sizes, but the BNC connector we're looking at is generally spec'd up to about 500 megahertz. Um, so we're gonna have a little look at that and also the, um, the what's called the box of the oscilloscope probe and the compensation adjustment. And in, inside here is, this is the BNC connector uh, here. And you'll see down the center, there's a center conductor. And that center conductor ultimately connects to this um, point here. But it does go through a lot of circuitry in that process. Um, and this outer ring is actually the shield um, or the zero volts, which will connect to your electronics. And so, although this is uh, well shielded, what I want to do is show you this. This is a signal generator uh, probe that we're gonna be using uh, later on for signal generator lead. And I just want to show you uh, the importance of connecting this to your, um, to your oscilloscope. Now, you'll notice that you can turn the outer shell of this connector and there's a very good reason for that. And also you'll notice it's got a sort of like a slot with a diagonal part and then a little pip at the end. Um, and we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you why this is so important. So here we have our uh, oscilloscope. And what I'm gonna do is you'll see on the oscilloscope, you'll see a little uh, metal stud coming out here and there's one 180 degrees on the other side. And what you do is you line this up, feed it through, and then when you turn this connector, it draws the whole connector into its mating part, and then it will click into place. This is the box area of the connector here, and here in this probe is our compensation uh, adjustment, uh, which we'll look at in detail uh, shortly. So let's go back to presentation and see what the next bit is. So the look at the tip end and the guard ring and the times one times 10 attenuation. So let's go back to our uh, screen, uh, our camera. And here we have the tip end and it normally comes with this uh, yellow shield already attached. It's there for a reason because it's there to protect the tip and also to shield the guard ring. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So we've got the tip the guard ring, and in here is 
a little connector area which you're going to connect your ground uh, leads to which we'll talk about uh, shortly and also you've got your uh, switch uh, times one in position you'll see it marked on the actual plastic so you'll see the times one there and down here it will be times 10 and so that allows you to uh, attenuate your probe if you need to right okay here we have the compensation adjustment tool let's go back to our camera so when you get the probe you'll also get a bag of bits like uh, this and inside that bag I'm going to empty this out because we're going to be looking at all the parts in here so there we go I'm just going to put that uh, data sheet to one side and here are all the parts and this tool here is your compensation adjustment tool and there are two ends to it there's uh, the cross point end here and there's a flat screwdriver end here and that uses the cross point end and when you put it inside the chamber you can actually adjust this uh, capacitance which we're going to uh, look at in detail shortly so that's the compensation adjustment tool so let's now go back to our presentation marker sleeves right let's go to our marker sleeves so these are the marker sleeves and you'll see they're in pairs. So you've got two yellows, uh, two greens, two blues and two reds. And they allow you to color code your probes. So what we do is I'm going to make this my red probe. So I take one of the red sleeves and I slip it over the end like this. So I can put it as close to the uh, tip end as possible. And similarly, I can take the other red marker sleeve and put it on the other end of the probe like that. And so that now color codes my probe. Now, if I've got all these wires all bunched up and I'm thinking, ah, oh, which one's which, then I can actually just look at the channel, look at the color, and I know this probe is channel A. Now, locating sleeves. So let's uh, discuss those. Now, the locating sleeve this uh, was the one it came with. So the two locating sleeves, um, you've got the protector slide sleeve here and you've got this one uh, here as well. Now, if we just put this one on here, as we push it on, you'll notice it, um, the tip uh, comes out the top here, which is great. And also it protects this bit, which is the guard ring. Now, why is that important? Well, let's uh, get a board here, which I've got. And this is just a, a, a PCB I've got uh, lying around. Now then, one of the problems when you're using an oscilloscope probe is that uh, as you're prodding around and going around your circuit, this guard ring is actually uh, affecting the ground. And so when you've got this connected, this whole scope probe connected to ground, you can accidentally touch this sleeve on your electronics. And this is particularly the case if you've got um, power transistors or power MOSFETs, where the tabs are actually uh, not necessarily at zero volt potential, um, which is generally the case. And so you can end up blowing your um, circuits because this guard ring has touched some of your electronics. So the best thing to do is make sure you always have your locating sleeve on like this. And this is just one of the two variants of the locating sleeve. So this protects the guard ring to make sure it doesn't actually touch any of your other electronics. So, uh, we can go around the circuit uh, doing this, but you'll notice that um, this is fine um, prodding uh, and probing this circuit, but it's not very stable. So I could slip off and go between two pins and that could cause a problem. So what you can do is uh, there, the other sleeve, this one here, you'll see has got a funny shape on the end and that allows it to locate across uh, between pins. So let me just put this one on instead. And so that allows me to actually locate between pins without sliding around. So I'm putting pressure on both um, uh, up, you know, up and down on here. And what I can do is move this around and it won't actually touch other, um, uh, other pins. Let's look at the next bit, uh, move back to our presentation. And we've got the hook tip. So let's have a look at the uh, hook tip. So this is the bit you'll probably use more than anything else. So here's the uh, hook tip and that pushes on over the probe, push it all the way in and 
you'll now see that you're, there's a little, uh, let me just move this out of the way so you get a bit, bit more of a contrast. You'll see there's a, a hook on the end and that allows us to then lock onto um, circuits um, or, or bits of our circuit like this. Now, the uh, and also because it uh, this shrouds the uh, guard ring, there's no chance of uh, shorting the guard ring out in, into your electronics. Uh, so this this works really well. Now the other thing is that I just want to point out is that this tip here is very very fragile, and I know <laughs> how tempting this will be. Here is a piece of uh, board uh, developed by a breadboard. And it is so tempting to go, oh, yes, I'll just stick this um, into one of these holes and I'll leave it dangling in there. And believe me, you won't have a tip for very long. The, there's quite a lot of pressure on the cable, um, on, on this cable uh, here. And so when you put it into, the, into this board, then what's going to happen is you'll end up bending the tip over and eventually it will snap because these are, there's, they, they're, not hugely, they're not hugely strong and so it's best to protect this. So I would strongly recommend that you make sure that you've got your um, hook tip on your probe um, at all times really, unless you're probing with one of the uh, locating sleeves instead, okay? And then finally, let me just go back to our presentation here and we've got the ground lead. So here we have the uh, ground lead and that, you'll see a little hooked clip there that slots into the hole and pushes into that chamber and it locates it. You can then pull it out if you wish, uh, but then pop it back in again, it's great. And this allows us to connect to a ground to our circuit. So this on my board is my local zero volts. And then I can actually monitor all sorts of uh, points on my circuit, either using the um, hook uh, tip or putting a locating sleeve on, on here instead and then probe around my board. Okay, so um, that's uh, covered uh, all of the um, accessories uh, of the uh, scope probe. So let's just go back to the uh, presentation and have a look at what's next.